Hey, so Nesto, today I'm going to show you how to use Neutron 4 for anyone new to the Neutron ecosystem. Let me start by quickly addressing two frequently asked questions about Neutron. What is it and when do I start using it? So what is Neutron? Neutron 4 is a plugin suite of intelligent tools designed to get you the best mix in the easiest way possible. You'll be familiar with some of these tools like you have an EQ here, you have compressors, transient shapers, gates, exciters, but then there's some unique tools like the sculptor and the unmask module here. They can also work together with some other ISO plugins to get even better results, which I'll show you at the end of the video. So when should you use Neutron 4? So there's two stages when I start to use Neutron. It's when it's time to shape my audio's tone or when it's time to start mixing my track. If you're wondering where in the processing chain I place Neutron 4, I like to put it as far down as, uh, as possible, but right before spatial effects like delay and reverb. Let's talk about Neutron's main workflow. In this example, I'm using Neutron on an individual track of a piano. So the main workflow is really simple. First, you use the assistant, then you use the controls in assistant view. And if needed, we're gonna dive into some modules. And of course, make sure you listen in context if you can. Um, in this demo, I have things soloed out. So no context, sorry. But when you're using it, make sure you're listening to everything in context. So I have Neutron 4 on this piano and I wanna enhance it. So let's click this little assistant button here. It wants us to play the audio. So what it'll do is it'll listen, it'll analyze the audio, and then give us a starting point for the mix. We can hear that it's already changing some things. Almost done. Here we go, this is what it gave us. So let's hear a before. Here's an after. So already we have a big shift and all we did was click a button. I think it still needs a whole lot of help, so let's help it out. So now we're gonna adjust things in this window here. This is called the assistant view. And you'll see four main controls. And these controls represent the four big decisions that you'll make whenever you're mixing. So you have tone shaping, you have your dynamics control, your character, and then your stereo imaging. So let's start with this first section. We see that Neutron 4 has detected that our sound is a piano, so it got that correct. And as a result, we're getting this target tone curve. The orange section right here, this represents the range of where pianos usually like to sit. The white line represents our audio, which is the electric piano. So now we'll adjust the slider. If you want Neutron to push the audio closer to that tone match curve, bring it up. If you wanted to stray away from it, bring it down, just like that. I want it right here, I think, right now. Yeah, we'll keep it there for now. Okay, let's move on to the punch section. This represents our dynamic control right here. If you want more compression, if you wanna hear more of that sustain be more pronounced, just drag the punch down. If you want the punch to act as an expander, so you can really hear those transients, then move it up. Let's hear what we want it in our example. Or down. Yeah, I want there to be some transients. Cool, we'll keep it right there. And let's move on to distort. Distort is where we can add in some harmonic character. You can include classic mode here, which is a more subtle um, form of saturation distortion or trash, which is a destructive form of distortion. And of course you can drag this node to blend between different distortion models. So let me demo what these things can sound like. So you really hear like the distinct characters between each model in classic and trash. Let me see where I want it in this case. I think, I think right there is uh, sounding good right now. The last section is quick and easy. It's gonna control the stereo width. So if you want a wider sound, move it up. A more narrow mono sound, bring it down. Cool, that's, uh, that's sounding pretty good. I'm gonna move to our detail view here and we'll bypass it all. Well, that's where we started <laughs> and here we're at now. So anyways, if you wanna dive deeper into Neutron, just click this tab here, it's the detail view. And now we have access to all the modules in here that you can tweak much more. 
And before I move on, if you're finding this video really helpful so far, please consider supporting the channel by liking this video. This kind of support helps a ton, so thanks. Let's get back to the fun stuff. Okay, so what happens if you wanna use Neutron 4 on a group or a bus? Here's what I find uh, works for me. If the group contains layers or sounds that are really similar to each other, then I use a mix assistant. So a group full of saw layers, I'll use the assistant, or if it's full of strings, I'm gonna use the assistant. However, if that group has sounds that are different from one another, like a, like a drum group, I'm actually gonna try the presets first. So let me show you why I use presets on a drum group. So here's a drum group that I have right here. Sounds pretty cool. So what I'll do is click the assistant and we'll see how it categorizes this whole bus. All right, so here's our results. Uh, when the assistant analyzes the drum group here, what happens is that Neutron is trying to categorize the sound. And what it gave us in this case was other. And that's definitely not what we want. Sometimes when it does analyze drums, it gives you like snare. Um, there's even, um, I'll be honest, there's even like a drums category here. But maybe I just have trust issues. I, I just don't trust it when it's analyzing something like a drum group. So what I do is turn to the presets. To find the presets, click the detail view here. And this is the preset menu, just click that. And then you have all these wonderful presets to choose from. There are so many different categories, which is great. Uh, and you know, there's the category from drum bus right here. My drum loop is pretty electronic, so I'll click that. And then what I will do is go through them, audition them and see what I like. So let's just start with this first one here. The next one. Share this one. Share this next one. Okay. All right, this one's pretty cool. I wanna, let's give this one a shot. But let's also help it out. It's pretty intense right now. I think we should drop the transient shaper. Do this exciter. Okay, before. After. To end this video, I wanna show you some other essential features that you should really know about, starting with the unmasking module. I'm gonna give a super quick demo of the unmasking module. If you want a fuller explanation, check out my other Neutron 4 video. So a classic masking example is between kick and bass. They both love to compete in the low end. So let's hear our bass and kick fighting one another. Yeah, they're, they're just stepping all over each other, which is, Funny, but we're gonna fix it. So what we're gonna do is place Neutron 4 on the signal that we want to get out of the way. So typically, we want the bass to get out of the way of a kick. So Neutron 4 is going on the bass. And then we're gonna route the kick as a sidechain signal into our bass. Oh, and of course, we gotta add in the unmask module. There we go. So now I'm gonna play this and we're gonna see a few different lines. I'm gonna mute them so I can explain what's going on. This gray line represents our bass. It's our input signal. The purple line represents the side chain signal. So that's our kick. And this orange line-ish section just represents where the unmasking is taking place. So let's hear it now and do a before and after, before. After. Yeah, just see how, see how much better it sounds? Yes, unmasking can be pretty subtle, but you can hear how when the unmasking is engaged, it sounds like the bass took a step back and the kick took, took a step forward. Let's hear it again before. After. Cool. Okay, time for another great feature. If you happen to have a stem or sample as a reference and you want your audio to get closer to that reference, you should use the target library. By using a reference, instead of using these predetermined tone curves as great as they are, you can get an even more customizable outcome. So back to my piano example, I have this loop um, from Splice that I found. And I want this to be like a tone reference for my original piano here. So I want my piano to match this piano. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna click this little symbol right here, which represents custom, our custom tone curve section. I'm gonna press this plus symbol and then find that sample. I have it on my desktop right here. Cool. Click open. And then suddenly we have a tone curve that matches that reference. 
So we'll hear our piano at 0%. Let's drop that distorted a little. Bring it up. So you can definitely hear the tone changing as we bring up the tone match slider. Let's bring it to... Yeah, it's pretty dark, but I think that's a good thing. Bring down the distort even more. Cool, so here is the reference. Here's ours. So isn't that crazy? It's, it's definitely sounding a lot more like that reference. Is it a perfect match? No, because there's so many other factors involved, but in a big picture kind of way, it is sounding more like that reference. The last essential feature I wanna show you is Isotope's Visual Mixer. Visual Mixer is really uh, amazing. I, I can't believe how it works. It analyzes your entire track. It takes every instance of Neutron 4 and Relay, which is Isotope's utility plugin, and it gives you suggested levels for all of those tracks. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I like to place Visual Mixer on the master bus. I think you can put it anywhere in your project, but for me, the, the master bus makes the most sense. And before I have Visual Mixer do its thing, let's hear this whole loop. It is, um, it's good, but the levels are terrible. All right, so let's make this mix a whole lot better. So we're gonna click Mix Assistant. We get some instructions here, walking you through what to do um, if you need help. I'm gonna click begin. And then right here we have every track with an instance of Relay, Neutron, or even like other Isotope products. So what I'm gonna do is tell Mix Assistant which ones to pay attention to. And then we are gonna tell um, Visual Mixer what to focus on. So in our case, we want like leads or vocals to be the focus. So now what we're gonna do is play our song. And if you had a whole song, you're gonna play it from the very beginning to the end of it. We just have this small little loop, so it's gonna just play through the loop and let Visual Mixer analyze it. Great, now we click go to results. And here we go, it's already set. Let's listen now. Yeah, I think it sounds so much better. We're gonna click accept. And then what we see here, we see all of our layers, they have different uh, levels now. Right now they're all in the center. What we can do is drag it to the left or right to if we wanna get some like stereo imaging going on. But honestly, this sounds so much better. This is such a good starting point and it did, did it all by itself. Uh, that was great, I love it. All right, I hope that the next time you mix, it's a whole lot easier because of Neutron, but there's a common mixing problem that I didn't cover, which is removing harsh frequencies from your mix. To do that, I use another fantastic plugin called Sood2. And if you wanna learn more about that, then click the video right here. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps other music people find this channel. Thanks a lot, later.